Welcome back to the program. Well, over the last eight weeks, Euronews has been road tripping across the continent, speaking to voters ahead of the EU elections to find out the issues on their minds. Now that the elections are underway, that epic road trip is coming to an end. We started on the Portuguese coast and our journalists Maeve McMahon and Jonah Calgren are now pulling into the European Parliament in Brussels. Well, let's go live now and talk to Royal Politics host Tessa Arcilla and Euronews' political editor Darren McCaffrey, who are waiting for the team to arrive. That's right. Uh, hi there, Tokes. And we are here in Brussels in the middle of uh, the European Parliament's grounds on the red sofa. This, this couch has been to uh, 14 countries. That's pretty, uh, pretty impressive. Um, yeah, so we are here. So this is where it all culminates pretty much. So on Sunday, um, when the elections are all over, every, all eyes in Europe will be on Brussels as we find out the results of these elections. But I think what's most important here are the voters, obviously, the people. And this is what we did with a road trip. Yeah, indeed, talking to uh, what lots of people in all those countries, getting a sense of actually what people out there are really concerned about uh, during these elections. But welcome to yeah, this is Plas But also pretty much uh, bridging this place with everyone out there. I think well, that's the, yeah, that is a crucial to. thing. Yeah, trying because, to, yes. Because ultimately, I think you know people often feel very disconnected with the national capitals. If you live, I don't know, in the south of France, Paris seems like a long way away. But my word, if you live in the south of France, Brussels seems even further away. Or if you hmm. live in Bulgaria, it seems very far away. And so it is trying to make, as you say, that connect. Absolutely. Between where we All are. right. So, well, it must have been nice to travel with this uh, red soap. But so let's find awesome. out what it was like, actually. So let's join uh, Maeve and Yona. They're right over here. Uh, right. Hi, guys. Welcome back. Welcome back. So Maeve um, and Yona, you guys were traveling. You ended here in Brussels. So where were you today? Just tell us about that. Well, this morning we were in Mullenbeck, right here in the city centre of Brussels. But last night we slept in the east of Flanders, in a very rural part of the country where people don't feel quite as European or quite as optimistic as they do today here in Place Lux. What this road trip really hammered home, and it's something that we all know, is that this is a huge bubble. The institutions and Brussels in general is a massive bubble and it feels very far away and very distant to people every day. They really don't understand how the institutions work. They really don't understand and they want to. I mean, they, they really want to get more information, but really confused. So, Joanna, was there anything that surprised you during this whole uh, trip? Well, I was quite surprised about the level of interest, though, because people don't understand it, maybe, like Maeve was saying, but they are interested and they want to find out more. And I was expecting more apathy, people saying, oh, I don't care about that. But people seem to either really, really like the European Union or really, really hate it. So, so that was quite so, interesting. So pretty much at least they have an opinion. But Darren, as we were seeing, this depends on where you are, really. What if we go east? Because you were in the west, pretty much, of Europe. So what about, you know, the yeah, other parts? I think, That's interesting. I think what's come out when you talk to all the correspondents who've done this road trip is that when you go to different parts of Europe, there are very, very strong different themes in, mm -hmm. you know, in the southeast and done in Greece and Bulgaria and Romania, the economy is very much number one, as it may well be in Spain and elsewhere, whereas actually migration has been a big issue in places like Germany and the Netherlands. You were talking about how going to voters uh, in the Netherlands, they were almost looking for an exit. An exit, that was the buzzword, Darren, where we were in Kirkgrade, which is a town about five kilometres from the German border. And so many people told us there that they would actually like to leave the European Union. But then I said to them, but what about Schengen? Because you kind of want to pass that border a couple of times a day without having to show your passport. And they were like, yeah. Actually, I wouldn't mind to keep Schengen, but I don't want the European Union. It's gotten too big. There's too many countries. They had very negative things to say about the eastern countries of the European Union. They feel that they just come and profit from the institution. And they also think that the Netherlands is just too full and too diverse. There are a lot of people who do not want to live in a multicultural society. And I think what's interesting when, you know, when we do our show, the Raw Politics, and we talk to politicians, a lot of the issues that come out are is ideology-based because that's the kind of rhetoric we hear from politicians. But at the same time, we were talking to correspondents. It actually boils down to something pretty simple, jobs and their daily lives. Is that what you found as well? To a certain degree. I mean, people that we met today uh, here, for example, in Brussels and, and yesterday, they were talking about jobs, jobs, jobs all the time. However, when you speak to people, for example, in Germany, in Bremen, they talk about climate change. They talk about things that maybe people in other parts of Europe don't talk about. So I think there's also quite a diverse, diverse set of things that people care about throughout the European Union. And, and just very finally, we've talked about apathy and you brought it up that you thought people were less apathetic than we thought. Uh, you know, we have seen turnout in every single election go down, down, down. Is this year... Will it be different? ...going to be different? 
That is the big question. I mean, as you said, there's a lot of engagement. And here in Belgium, I mean, this is a really high voter turnout. Back in 2014, I think they were the most out of all the EU countries because they're obliged, they're forced. Otherwise, they get a fine. But people did tell us as well, especially in Liège and Valonia, quite an industrial city, they told us there, look, we're only voting because we have to. But we don't know who to vote for. We don't have the information. A lot of people just turn in the pub chatting to their friends saying, oh, yeah, we vote for that person just because somebody told me to. They really are not equipped oh, with the information. Oh, no. Also, the big question is, all right, we will. have you fallen out? Did you fall out? You were together with Paul. Uh, not, not at all. Not at all. We were friends Sorry, the whole time. That is a big question, right? OK, OK. All right, so... That's it. That's the end of the road trip. Uh, here is we're going back to the red couch. It's quite a comfy we're, we're <laughs> red couch. In the back of you guys. Well, by the way, we're in Place Lux. We're here, just, just outside, outside the European Parliament. Right. We're the right side uh, doing uh, and preparation. Join us, don't forget, on Sunday where we have special coverage of the European election. So we'll be right here bringing you all the latest as well. And I'm taking this sofa home. It's a really nice day here. <laughs> Bye, Tito.